Hello guys, uh, welcome to another tutorial for Kale. Uh, today we will go through the um, downloading part, a small introduction, and then we will create a new project from scratch and we will do a small debugging activity just for learning purposes. So um, what is Kale? So the Kale is an IDE and it's a quite a really performant um, software. So it does it do editor. So you can have a text editor within Kale. The, it's not the best one. There's much better one, but you do have this on top of all the things that it has. Also, it makes the compiler and the assembler. So you can do the compiling. You have your file ready even to download with to, to load with other softwares. And more than that, it does do also the linker. So if you have a different model for your soft software, it can link them together. So you, you do have here a real um, package that make a lot of great things. Finally, it do also the loading and the debugging. It means that you can make your code and immediately load it in your software. Also, you do the debugging. So for the for people who are already used with the Arduino microcontroller, you can do your upload, download, upload your code in the microcontroller, but you, you, you don't know what's happening inside. However, with the Kale, you can make debugging. And there is one option that I really like is you can de debug in a simulator so you can understand how your software is working. Anyway, so let's uh, start so to download. So you just go to download, product download. You go for the MDK arm. You put your information here and you put submit. You will receive an email and using a link so you can download that, that, that um, the, the software and install it. Uh, I'm not going through the installation process because it's straightforward and you just put next, next, next. Um, one thing, you are downloading um, a free version that, um, that has a quite complete um, package of good tools. However, you can simulate uh, or debug uh, at the level of 32 kilobyte of flash memory, just for your information. But that's more than enough. It's quite, it's quite um, enough to to download and uh, to, to to play with and do a lot of things. Okay, so let me bring quickly an empty window. So this is the empty window after you open the kale. First thing, the most important thing you have to do is to go for the three nice package that you do have here, the pack installer. The, the this yellow, green, and blue. Okay, so this window is for all the product. Just click OK for all the product that are uh, using the the ARM microprocessor. So you can see the the list of companies here that have microcontroller using um, the, the ARM uh, microprocessor. And l let me give you an example. I'm using a lot of the STM. Um, for this is a microcontroller series and when you select here you can download or install download and install a list of package that helps you to, to manage a certain drivers or certain APIs that's quite very good very easy to handle so you can find a lot of a lot of them you just click to download and you do have the package so you just put here and it start downloading it so you don't do have to, to, to make a lot of things. And we will see later on where we find this download. Okay, so I don't need to download because I already downloaded. Also, you have the search here. You can put, so today we are using the STM32F103C8. Yeah, you can find this. And you can find all the package related to, to this microcontroller. Great. So whatever you, the most important one to, to download usually are the Kimsys. Always go for the Kimsys for your microcontroller. And then the other one are I think mostly optional. Good. So I don't need to change for the moment. And okay, we downloaded our package. Let's create a new project. So first step is the new vision project. 
Um, one advice, so when you create a new project here, for example, it creates also a list of files with, with it. So better to not lose the track, to go here, create a new, um, a new folder. I'll call it a blink because we will make small tests to see how we load and debug a microcontroller. I'll call it here blink2, so blink, just stm32f1 for traceability. And as you can see, the, 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 the package that I downloaded previously, I'm using right now the stm and the Texas. So if I put my stm32 one so I still have the whole series and fortunately I remember it and C8 and okay so here's short description about um, this uh, microcontroller good so when you choose your microcontroller you have later the list of software you want to download within your project for today and mostly for all the projects we will be going on, I'll be downloading only two ones. The first, the core one. The core one is where you have your interrupt and the most important data related to your microcontroller and the startup. The startup is related to the um, clock, the clock speed when your microcontroller will be starting at the first time. Doing this, so the core in the Kimsys and the startup other device. Just put OK. Great! We have our project now. So, um, just for traceability also, I don't put targets, so I put always STM32F1 or the name of the microcontroller I'll be using. I call this one app. And let me add my main sorry so to, to add your program you just go add item to the group choose c of course and main right so now we have our editor ready but before doing that and start coding one step is to prepare your target options so this is the magic one step one check for the target tab. Here it says that the clock speed of the, 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 the microcontroller, the internal clock speed is 12 megahertz. That's wrong and it's not a big problem for the, the microcontroller itself but it can, when you do the simulation, not the debugging on the microcontroller, the simulation directly on using the KL, that can create some problem. So I'm putting here 8 megahertz, which is my internal my internal clock. Next, next here this is the debugging environment. So um, I will be selecting this one later on. But for my debugging tool, for me it would be the ST Link debugger, and I will need to add one special thing: is to reset and run. This is when we load the program in the microcontroller. The program is reset automatically, which is quite a great thing if you have um, a tiny uh, board. Okay. The last and final one, the one that I explained in a different video. So here, to, to set up, because there is a problem in the system, please see the video to, to see how to, to, to clean it. F13. C8 and for the this one the arm uh, STM PL. Okay, good, great. So now we have everything set up. Um, so to to go forward, the first step I'll be doing here, I'll be adding the just the library for the microcontroller. You can do it, just insert, include this file. This file include all the um, registers. So if we go to open the document, this is coming with the sim uh, Kimsys and the device. Here you do have all your registers address. So you don't need uh, to, to waste time looking for the register, you just name them and it's quite much faster. 
for the program I'll be already prepared the program before that let me share with you the uh, blue pin so this is what they call the blue pill it's a really tiny small very cheap very cheap microcontroller I love using it so it's around two to three boxes it has um, um, clock speed up to 72 megahertz and a lot of options so I'll make a tutorial just for this one only so today there's a small program I'm be doing so we have the PC13 LED we would like to make it blinking so let me copy paste quickly the program just to, to go so we don't need to to, to go for the details but as you can see here so I just copied my program and it shows me there is a mistake on it this is the editor part text editor part of the program so here this I created a delay function without declaring it in the top doing this great so we do have our program working so before um, doing any compiling so first thing to do is to save and then this is the compiler yeah it runs with one warning here as you can see and this saying that if we look for it warning the last line ends without a new line so if I go here and add a new line save upload zero warning so just for, for the information okay our program is ready looks maybe fine let's do one thing so first we go here and for the um, debug options and let's use the simulator to see what's happening in our system we are not loading in the microcontroller we are using the simulator so to debug we click on that, that button the D with a loop good so you have seen the error message saying that it only 32k so this is already a debugging environment within this one so the, the target is to check if PC13 is blinking let's go here and as peripherals you can see now I can access all the GPIO or other peripherals of the system which is great so let's go GPIO C that's the one I'm interested on okay so it's PC 13 but before looking to that you have to run the, the program so I'll be running the program and please take a look on the PC 13 what will happen so I'm running my program and you can see that the PC 13 is changing the states so we will go to the detail in all Nader's video but today just to see how the debate works and we can see that the PC 13 is not blinking it just showing this is my output it's just showing that it's staying on the high uh, status okay good so there's something wrong in my program so we can you see that it's not blinking when I go back from the debugging mode clicking on the same button the, the, the issue is here I'm just putting it high to put it blinking I just need to put the toggle equation save and okay so after that I go to debug and the window is saved so now if I run my program you can see that my uh, my uh, port is is um, blinking so you can see that you don't even need to go to your microcontroller you have a quite a good environment to, to make your testing so now that we we checked and verified that the system is working perfectly we can close I put it a little bit smaller here because we don't need too many things and you can see so if this is the button where I load my program into my microcontroller here let me load we do have a blinking LED so that's perfect 
So let's add a small thing to that. Let's debug live. So first let's put here. This is a stop debugging point. So if I go to the debugging mode, ah, there's one thing I need to change before. So here I'm still in the simulator mode. First, if you would like to you'd like to debug in the microcontroller itself, you have to go to the debug and use the STLink debugger. Okay, good. Save and debug. So now you see the, the LED stopped blinking and the program is waiting also for running. So if I click run, yeah, I do have my my uh, le LED blink and then if I run again, it waits a bit again and it's blinking again. So as you can see, you can debug your program, your microcontroller with this program, which is fantastic to, to see what is the issue or there is any error in the system. I think that's all for the program today. So um, that's a, that was a short introduction. It's already a too long video, but you can see how you can use quite a program even without a microcontroller, at least to start and to see the behavior of um, your system and to see how it impacts your microcontroller. Thank you a lot for today and stay tuned. Bye.